On today's episode, the quarterbacks, the truth, part two, as well as some dynasty mailbags. Subscribe to this channel, leave us a comment, enjoy the show. Was one of your resolutions this year to order less takeout? HelloFresh sends everything you need to get dinner on the table. No meal planning. All deliciousness. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code FOOTBALLER16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLER16. And Footclan, how do you take your coffee? Are you a full body In roast? In my mouth. Something light? <laughs> I prefer. I just made the transition to the whole beans. How's that going? Oh, it's going great because trade coffee makes it the best. Trade sells the freshest roasted and ethically sourced beans from America's best independent roasters. They ship free to you as often as you like whole or ground, you could do it yourself, grind, or you can get it done yep. for you. Don't, Either don't way, take care of it. You could take their coffee quiz to get started. Trade Coffee guarantees that you will love your first bag, or they'll replace it for free. They're going to match it to your preferences. Trade has been featured by the New York Times. Wire GQ has delivered over five million bags of coffee, and right now, for our listeners, Trade Coffee is offering a total of twenty dollars off your first three bags when you go to drinktrade.com slash footballers to get started take their quiz at drinktrade.com slash footballers and start your journey to find your perfect cup that's drinktrade.com slash footballers for twenty dollars off your first three bags welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your host Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, January 20th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mm, just in case. <laughs> you don't think we can get away with just the fantasy footballers? No, we probably could. Yeah. I mean, we're more than just a podcast. Yeah. We're, we're a, a show. Yeah, I thought you were going to go with a uh, <laughs> worldwide phenomenon, but whatever. I mean, both are true. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You can watch the show. You can subscribe, click the bell. They'll tell you when the new show is happening. Brooks is here. Brooks, how are you doing today? Excellent. Oh. Yeah, life treating you all right? Excellent. You got any New Year's re- resolutions that you've been uh, – are you a resolution guy? Um, Kind of. It's more just rough goals. Like, but don't, do they, don't you, eat as much okay. later in the night, in the day. Oh, uh, so, okay. But you, like, made that – Rough goals. You made that thought. Yeah, my goals <laughs> end up pretty I, rough at the I, end of the year. The idea, do you have a resolution? No, but I got a rough goal. That might be more achievable, right? New Year's rough goals? Yeah, there you go. If it's just a rebrand because resolutions have failed so many times? I mean, we should be capable as people of, of making resolved decisions at any point in the year, not just January 1st. We should be able to make resolutions January 1st, too. Like, we should be able to succeed. We can't. I didn't get it in in time. <laughs> right. Yes. Ah, sorry, Didn't man. put it in the dream journal. I meant to write that down, but <laughs> I guess 2022 is going to be <laughs> wild. <laughs> Uh, but what was yours? Yours was not not eat as much late at night. Yeah, mm, yeah, indigestion <laughs> issues over there. <laughs> I I don't know, no, Mike. I, man, I, this is the off season. You, you're cackling, but in my head, that's what it was. Yeah, it's because if you what if, else is it? If I eat too late, I wake up <laughs> with the bubble guts. <laughs> this is life for yeah. me. It's just weight gain. That's mm, it. There's that. Yeah, that's your resolution. Yes, exactly. exactly right. I wanted to hit one for once. I wanted to really, really succeed. And so I was like, I'm going to put on about 10 this year. And uh, I think with enough work, I can do that. Now, uh, we have the second half of the truth on today's show, the truth of the quarterback position. It's an ugly truth. It is? It is. You've already truth. Wait, you, you previewed it? Well, yeah, I do you prepare for the, I do prepare the for the shows. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> I know everything we're going to talk about. It's, it's quite amazing. <laughs> Um, you went to the screening ahead of time. That's good. Uh, truth about the quarterbacks on today's show. We just did part one on the Tuesday episode. We have a great quick question. The quick question here comes from Bert Bathtub on Twitter. Bert's going to leave it there. Bert Bathtub five, the fifth one. 
Bird yep. bathtub one through four were taken. <laughs> they were taken. <laughs> uh, well, maybe those by his father, and you know, uh, long, this is long Bert lineage ba- of, of the, the fifth. <laughs> uh, here's the question: Which NFL team ended up being the most different from how you envisioned it before the 2021 season? Um, and there are lots of examples of what you might have expected. So I'll let I'll let you guys start. Uh, I will kick it off here because this is a team that, um, has, I mean, it's changed a lot of people's opinions of what they've done recently to end the year going into the playoffs. Um, but also for me personally, I was not a giant believer of the draft value of the Cincinnati Bengals this last year. Our bold prediction shows, if you remember. Oh, no, were yeah. they? You got it wrong. I had like five years in a row of uh. correctly nailing a a bust team for fantasy, and this year it was the Bengals. I thought that Jamar Chase was being overdrafted, that Burrow would get off to a slow start. Mixon is, you know, has been unreliable over the years. Yada, yada, yada. But uh, the Bengals are a very good team. They have surprised. Jamar Chase is the best rookie of all time. Um, Burrow has, uh, he did get off to a slow start, but he has caught fire and looks great. So overall, I did not think that the Bengals would be as good. And I, you know, for fantasy purposes, I'm speaking specifically offensively. I did not think that their offense would be clicking and uh, humming as well as it is right now before this season started mike uh i guess the i'll go with the disappointment and it's the the, that's the baltimore ravens of like it seemed like coming into the season you had uh the the team you know with their actions telling you well we're gonna try to be a a more pass uh a, a pass a heavier pass approach to our offense here like they added a first round wide receiver rashad bateman i mean he goes down to injury at the beginning of the year. That's not his fault, but just changed some things. And and then the loss of their running backs of Dobbins and Gus Edwards right at the beginning, going down to ACL tears before the season even starts. It just was overall pretty disappointing. And like Lamar Jackson will be uh, talked about on this show, which means that he was not a top 10 quarterback. Now, Mark Andrews was incredible. But overall, what you were hoping for and expecting fantasy wise and, and the offensive output of the Baltimore Ravens, it was it was pretty disappointing. I, th- I think most of that was injury. I really do think most of that was injury because um, when you when you delete the running back core in its entirety right. from the draft process or the the start of the season, and you bring in old veterans who can get the job done, but they're not they're not helping your offense. If you look at like the first nine games that Lamar Jackson played, he was on pace for 4,600 passing yards. That is like very not Lamar Jackson. So I right. think what you were saying, you you know, we were looking at their transactions and what we expected. I think that was on its way, but the injuries to, you, you, you brought up Rashad Bateman, all the running backs, Lamar himself really derailed that. So I, I don't know. I think the Bengals, they get a free pass for me. This right. Year. And we'll the get Bengals? Into- the 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 Ravens. We'll get into uh, Lamar a bit more, but through the first ten weeks, he was a top twelve quarterback five times, and outside of that, four times. So it just that's not what you were hoping for when you drafted Lamar. I don't know if I have one team. I think I have a handful that I'll group together in the yeah uh, the quarterback slash offense just never got going, and it deleted a bunch of fantasy options category, which is Denver. And Carolina and the Saints, where pass catchers on all those teams were almost universally useless. You know, you can kind of say, okay, DJ Moore gave you something sometimes. But, I mean, Robbie Anderson was one of the busts of the year. Mm -hmm. You had no one viable in the New Orleans offense, pass catching-wise, across any position. And the Broncos, like, it wasn't – you'd love to look at the Broncos and be like, okay – they just alternated big weeks because they were right. they were taken from each other and you know Sutton went off and then Judy and then it was Patrick. No, it was mostly they just all just none of them did anything. Oh, for sure. I mean, they. I I think the the biggest offensive bust of the year has to be the Broncos. The, the, the I mean, you had you had Javante 
who was drafted ahead of Melvin Gordon disappoint because of the timeshare. The only real value there was Melvin Gordon, yes, the, the, <laughs> the man left for dead. Everyone was excited for Noah Fant and uh, could Cortland Sutton come back? Could Jerry Judy really take that year two leap? And everybody that was like that you were excited about, they all sucked. Yeah, and I think it should be, you know, it's it's always easy. I think on the last show we did a lot of like projecting how it can get better for people. I think that's just because that's human nature. We want to see the best pathway forward. We do this as hometown fans. We do this as fantasy fans. Like, unfortunately, a bad quarterback slash offensive coordinator system, it can really be impossible to overcome. It, I think we all agree mm -hmm. that Kyle Pitts is extremely talented. I think we can all agree that DJ Moore, Terry, McC Terry McLaurin, J Jerry Judy, these are all players that if they were given volume, in a good offense would perform for fantasy. And yet they can kind of be eliminated from weekly consideration just based on how the offense is performing. How, so, how can we not have more better quarterbacks? More better quarterbacks? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's like just uh, when you think about how many people are, are in the world yeah, and the fact 30, that only, 32. only five or ten <laughs> of them are good at this game. Like, give me 32. It's I'll, hard. I won't be greedy and say that all the backups have to be really good. Just the starters. I should have done it. I should have gone pro. Yeah. I mean, I thought that you there were denied enough. us. I didn't do it because I thought there'd be a lot of people that could do it. There's just too many of them around. I won't stand out. Jointhefoot.com. If you want to become a part of our fantasy football community, you get a bo bonus <laughs> weekly show, which if you're bemoaning the fact that there aren't five footballers shows a week, why not make it three? Add yeah. a little extra show over there at jointhefoot.com and some other premium perks. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. You can follow us on social media, Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Mike is at FF Hitman, Jason at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. And, uh, I mean, shall we do it? So I just, uh, one little quick, hey, 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 uh, hey Footland. Uh, Footlandvote.com. Just swing to that website and uh, click on the fancy football. You're bored if you're not Somebody, doing yeah. anything. Okay, you only got to do it once. Just a little real quick. Footclanvote.com. Help us out uh, for a social media award from uh, from uh, the FSGA. And I'll, I'll be very, I think, forthright, mm -hmm. honest Okay. with our listeners. That's yes. what we do. Yes. Mike likes to win. Yes. Mike hates to lose. More than I like winning. Yes. 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 So... Don't make so Mike, don't make Mike sad. Yeah, footclambo.com. Uh, let's get into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right. We covered the top 10 quarterbacks by way of total fantasy point uh, production where they finished on the last show, on the Tuesday show, in part one. And today we're going to go from, what, 11 through as many as we can? Is that the goal here, Brooksy? Yes, sir. Um, all right, let's unpack. You said it's a mess, huh? Yeah, it's it's a mess because truly we, and I don't mean we as in the three of us, I mean we as in everybody drafting, everybody in the industry, the average draft position of these quarterbacks going into the year, they really did end up, pretty darn accurate the top mm -hmm. 10 ADP were the top 10 fantasy points per game scorers and the next wow. tier usually wow. usually impressive. this show is the exciting show usually this show is the one where it's like here are the guys that you really want to look for as streaming candidates next year whatever I think most of the people we're going to talk about today they might suck like well, you, we'll see. Kirk Cousins kicks us off, and he was great. He was. Uh, my answer to the quick question was almost the Minnesota Vikings, because Andy, if you remember when we first did our first run through of um, uh, UDK stats, videos, uh, no, the, the 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 stats, I projected the Minnesota Vikings defense to come back around and that they were going to run the ball a lot, not throw the ball much. But Kirk Cousins really impressed me this year. I I I had him outside of my top. 15 quarterbacks and and he was uh very good uh, quarterback 11 consistency ranked quarterback 10 this year nine top 12 performances only six percent great games so you didn't have those uh you know in the past i think you had some of those 
Matthew Stafford versus Kirk Cousins battles Detroit, Minnesota. You'd get number one, number two finish on the week. But 4,200 yards, 33 touchdowns, just seven interceptions. Did a lot of the damage even after Adam Thielen was hurt. And Thielen was great. Did it without Dalvin Cook at times during the year. Um, Pretty good, consistent streaming yeah. quarterback, but you wouldn't have put him in the content to have started him every week category. No, I don't. I don't think so because he, you know, close, close. You you figure the like Jalen Hurts was a guy we talked about yesterday where he wasn't putting up thirty point performances, but he was always very solid. Um, Kirk was never had those big, you know, was one time in the top five at the position, so he was not really someone that was winning you weeks. Um, he was mostly consistent, but then he did have, you know, pretty big letdown games, unlike uh, Jalen Hurts, or more commonly, uh, you know, more often games of 15 points or so. Sure, but for someone drafted in the 14th as the as the quarterback 19, I mean, if you were in if you were in a deep league that and you waited on quarterback, ended up with Kirk, certainly could have been a lot worse. But does the dynamics of this team change yeah. moving forward and is Kirk even there to be a part of it because you know they're moving on from maybe Zimmer. what their yeah what their kind of identity has been potentially yeah they have a lot of cap issues uh they don't have a lot of room they fired their GM and their head coach so there is rumor from Minnesota that they might try to look to unload the 40 million dollar man in yeah, Kirk Cousins uh, you know yeah I don't know if uh, if they would be able to or not but um going forward I'd call the Saints <laughs> sure yeah I mean call the Saints call the the teams you just mentioned Carolina and and Denver I I hope he does land in one of those spots but in the meantime assuming he is back with the Vikings I feel like Justin Jefferson's enough isn't he enough to make Kirk Cousins great with, with Dalvin Cook yeah with an with a running game that actually functions, sure. I mean, their their problems were not because their offense wasn't good enough to get it done. I don't think. No, that was the that was the ironic part is that the defensive head coach and Mike Zimmer, the defense is what failed the Vikings. Yeah, and they you know they dealt with injuries and other things, but you're you're right. It'll be interesting to see what happens in Minnesota. Somehow, some way, Ryan Tannehill ends up number twelve. This one is wild. I mean. This was a gross season. If I had started Ryan Tannehill any week, literally any week of the year, I would have been disappointed. Every week I started him, other than week 18, which I don't play fantasy football in, I would have been sad that I started him every single week of the year. His consistency rank was 17. How is that even possible? These numbers can't be right. He can't be the 22nd most consistent in the first half and 21st most consistent in the second half and end at 17, can Well, he? you have uh, other people that are pushing their way in and above in different halves. Oh, and all the all the other fill-in quarterbacks. And exactly. So, yeah, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Ryan Tannehill was the was a quarterback one this year. He finished the season as a QB one, and literally, you're not wrong, Andy, you would be disappointed every single week that what you was played it? him. Do we have what he is by points per game? Because I, I feel like that. that truth needs to be said out loud. Yeah, I mean, this is the truth <laughs> episode. He, he busted 59% of the time. He only had a great game 6% of the time, which would be uh, the, the basically the one single game. Um, you know, the, the, the thing is, is he didn't have a lot of the mega busts, right? He, he wasn't going out there and putting up three points in any wacky game. And so that kind of elevated him over the course of the season. It finishes QB 12. But going into next year, I mean... He dealt with injuries and yada yada, but there was also a change with uh, the offensive coordinator, and he just wasn't. Had Henry had some players at the beginning of the year and still didn't do it. Yeah, he wasn't that good. He was essentially the quarterback 15 in points per game. I'm not going to count Nick Foles and his one start. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, his greatest quality for fantasy players this year was that he played every game. Yeah. And, you know, he has a, he's connected to a great wide receiver in the same way that you know, Kirk Cousins, if he stays in Minnesota, is connected to a great, great wide receiver, but more injury prone. I mean, A.J. Brown has gone down time and time again. I just don't have any – I'm not chasing a resurgence from him. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, I this is clearly a team that needs to add to the wide receiver position. They thought they were doing that when they brought in Julio Jones. They, they said, we need another strong 
uh, wide receiver, and they didn't have Julio Jones for the most part this year. Certainly not the Julio Jones of yesteryear. So this offseason, I expect that they, they'll they recognize that and say, we need to give him another viable weapon. And that could make me turn back towards Ryan Tannehill. I do think he's a good quarterback, but... 3,700 passing yards. Yeah, I mean, this year 21 touchdowns. Gross. Uh, Derek Carr came in at 13, consistency rank of 15. Gross. Okay, I see where we're going. <laughs> Zero great games on the year. Twenty nine percent good, fifty three percent bust. He yeah, but what about those first three weeks? He was a top twelve guy. Failed to have a three passing touchdown game all year. I, I it's Impressive. funny because I I do feel like uh, is he doing the Jalen Hurts? He was a better quarterback in reality during their kind of run to make the playoffs at the end of the year. The connection with Hunter Renfro and Zay Jones. And he was out of the top 20 almost every week to end the year. So 4,800 yards, 23 touchdowns. His most valuable weapon in the receiving game was Darren Waller. And he missed Darren Waller for a large chunk. His next most valuable receiver, and, and not to take anything away from Hunter Renfro, who's unbelievable, you could argue was Henry Ruggs. Field stretcher, uh, able to you know have the yak. Um, and when, when you lose both of those guys, which, you know, you look at those first three weeks, he was great. Well, he had all his weapons. Um, I commend Derek Carr for doing more than I thought he would with the weapons he had. But, you know, I, that's what I'm talking about, man. W was anybody happy playing Derek Carr in single quarterback leagues? No. No. No, and I don't think many people did very often. Yeah, he, he wasn't. It seemed like he could be that guy at the beginning of the year. And the, the Raiders, for our quick question, they were a team – <clears throat> not that I expected, you know, huge fantasy output. They were just, they were very interesting though of Josh Jacobs. When your, your leadership goes out and gives a third down pass catching specialist, a huge bag of money can in Kenyon Drake and you bring him in and then somehow Josh Jacobs becomes <laughs> like the most steady fantasy force on this team, including their now involving him in the passing game, it was a, it was weird. And Waller was a complete letdown for where you drafted him. Aside from Week One, there's they were a, they were a upside down team in terms of what you thought you were getting. Yeah, and it didn't help that in the middle of the year you lose your you have coach. all this turnover. Your coach, your your wide receiver, uh, now Mike Mayock, which we didn't yeah. talk about on the show, but he's gone. Not surprisingly. Yeah. What the, what are they they gonna do, man? Let's talk about Carson Wentz real quick first before okay. we uh, thank today's sponsors. Okay. Wentz, by the way, I did not see this. Is this a real quote from Booger McFarlane? When, when oh, Ky do we have a Booger quote? When Kyler threw the pick six, he said, what in the Carson Wentz was that? That sounds right. I, I don't know if it's true, but I'll, I like it. I, I think more people played Carson Wentz than they would have played Derek Carr. There were more people that would have bought into certain weeks. Yes. And like Carson fit the streaming dynamic well where you could try to predict a matchup. You saw some ceiling. Number five finish against the Buccaneers and against the Jets. Top 12 finishes in four other games. So you saw some some signs of life, but you never got a great game, which is over 26 fantasy points, and you barely got a good game. And now, you know, it's like, is Carson going to be a starter anywhere anymore? Yeah, I mean, he very well might not have a job. Uh, Chris Ballard did not seem... Uh confident in keeping Carson Wentz even though they paid a first rounder for him the nice thing about Carson Wentz was when he you know when you're talking about these guys in the the streaming category he performed better against the bottom teams he performed better at home so the like the 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 matchups where you would go I think I can play him this week because he's got a good matchup he's at home he's favored yada yada those are the weeks he did come through so um you know, once we're to this level, and, and the next two guys are, are far more interesting for fantasy purposes, but when you're at the Carson Wentz level, that's really what you want. You want, like, an easy, predictable guy who's not just, uh, you know, who who beats up on easy defenses because you're not going to play him week in and week out. Incredibly, he was the QB7 from week 5 through 12. So, again, that's a stretch there, but there was a stretch where he was a top-10 guy. The Carson Wentz next year carries a $15 million dead cap. So it's hard to see moving on that the Colts would just flat out cut him. I don't know that you're going to be able to trade him after he he was just traded for a first round pick. I and, think he'll be their quarterback. Yeah, I 
I think they're coming down off of this Jacksonville loss and they're angry and they're issuing public statements about how sorry they are. And everybody's guilty. Everybody's at fault for that loss. Right. And and the reality is they want to replace Carson Wentz and they probably can't. Like, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, just getting rid of someone that's not great doesn't do you any good if you can't replace him with someone better. And, it, you know, for better or worse, Carson Wentz is an average quarterback. So it's very difficult to upgrade. There was a time I was very, very jealous. Oh, I of remember the Philadelphia that. Eagles and the fact that they had stumbled upon Carson Wentz, where they, well, didn't. they didn't really stumble. I mean, they 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 did a full send to get him. They well, okay, stumbled is wrong. It was the in, wrong one. Like, he was the number two pick, and yes. it was in contrast to Golf. So you thought about it, and you were like, Man, "Okay, gotcha." You know, they should have taken Wentz, and Golf, you know, doesn't look good. And I was just jealous of having yeah. that foundational piece, but things change quick. And Foot Clan, before we move into the rest of the quarterbacks, I want to thank today's sponsor, Wealthfront. Uck, ladies and gentlemen, we all have regrets sometimes, but do not let one of those regrets be that you aren't thinking about your future, your financial future, retirement. These are things that you need to be thinking about today, and you can go check out Wealthfront.com right now and get that situation going. You can start investing in no time with Wealthfront's classic portfolio, or make it your own with things that you care about like uh, socially responsible funds, tech, crypto trusts, or hundreds of other investments. Wealthfront was designed by financial experts to help you turn your good ideas into great investments without the hassle of doing everything yourself. Don't want to spend hundreds of hours trying to lower your tax bill? Well, they help you do that. Not sure how to rebalance your portfolio? Well, they do it for you automatically. They are trusted with over $28 billion in assets helping nearly half a million people build their wealth. So to start building your wealth and get your first $5,000 managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash footballers to start building your wealth. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers to get started today. We also want to thank HelloFresh for supporting the show. If you don't know the story on HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, Seasonal recipes, they get delivered right to your door. Skip the trip. Skip that trip. Skip it. I just made a uh, a meatloaf and a and a pasta. Mm. Wow. It was delightful. How was the grocery store, Mike? The gross what are you talking about? Exactly. Well well said. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm just sad I didn't get any of that. I didn't get to make that. Uh, you didn't bring me any. No leftovers, my man. And the neat thing is it's, it makes cooking easy. I mean, Mike did it. It's got to be easy. Yeah, and then, that, look, that's, that's the testimony you'll need. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mike I made, made something. I made something that looked like a, rest, a restaurant meal. It was a delightful uh, tomato sauce-based pasta mm. with, a, with a side of meatloaf. And I made it. Just me. Yeah, that guy. This guy. The one with the tattoos. All right. <laughs> that's why it's America's number one meal kit. And let me give you another factoid because we like that. 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. You can save 65 a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. People think it's one or the other. You got to pay more to get the convenience. No, you save and you get convenience. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballer16 and use the code footballer16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballer16 and use the code footballer16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Now we actually get to talk about some interesting names. A couple of guys here. Let's start with Lamar Jackson, who the only reason he is here at quarterback 15 is because he missed the end of the season, uh, missed a week to COVID. So you have five games that he was absent from. Um, he was still not, Mike, you brought it up earlier. He was not the Lamar that you hoped. Tied was, for seventh in points per game. Now, granted, that contains a... A uh, game of 1.2 points because he got hurt at the beginning. 12th in consistency. Right. And that is not what you want from a mobile quarterback like Lamar Jackson. One of the beautiful things about the people who have the crazy rushing baseline at quarterback is that you get hyper consistency as seen from Jalen Hurts. So it's it pretty disappointing um, in, in that way from Lamar Jackson. But he still had he still had his good games, you know, three games as a the quarterback two or better on the week. So let's put this in a broader context because yesterday we talked about Josh Allen. He repeated at number one. So you finally saw a quarterback do that in fantasy. 
Lamar had a disappointing year last year, a strong finish, but a disappointing year overall relative to his MVP season. You look at the game logs this year, kind of seem more like last year, right, than it did the MVP season. So when you paint the picture now, you got four seasons of Lamar. You had the surge to the MVP level, and then you've had some ups and downs. Nothing to be, you know, still a top-tier guy. Yes. But also some reason to maybe have some hesitation about the offense. And it's easy to look at the running back and say, okay, well, if they had some running backs here, they figured out, well, you know, Matthew Stafford had Sonny Michelle and injured Daryl Henderson and figured some things out. And, you know, Lamar had injuries and a lot going on, but didn't get it done to the degree that I think fantasy players would have been happy with. So where do you, where do you look at his ADP moving forward? Are you taking your shot on a, like you guys painted a picture of glory for Joe Burrow on Tuesday mm -hmm. and the weapons, right? And the pass reliance, right? Are you turning that direction? Um, you know, it, it's going to be a little bit about, you know, the cost is, is it around cheaper to get Joe Burrow or is it Pat, around it cheaper to be. get Lamar Jackson? It'll be around cheaper to get Joe Burrow. It'll be two the, rounds cheaper. Then I would, then I would lean the Joe Burrow route. If you look at, so the beginning of the year, um, the first seven games, that was before their bye week. I, I, I talked about this earlier. Lamar Jackson was on pace for 4,700 passing yards. That's awesome. And you think, oh, okay. Well, that came at the expense of the rushing yards. He Not true. He was on pace for 1,100 rushing yards as well. But yet during that stretch, during that stretch, he had four of the seven games where he wasn't a, a quarterback one. And so you go, how, well, how does that make sense if he's putting up all this yardage? And the reality is he came back to normal touchdown yes. rates. Not bad touchdown rates. Uh, league average touchdown a little, rates. Uh, a little bit under the average. Uh, what was he, 4.4 4, this year? He was year? at 4.2 on the season. Okay, so, um, I mean, what not uh, the, the league average is usually right around 4.4. 4. Yeah, well, that's what he was during that seven-game stretch that I'm talking about. Okay. The beginning of the year where I think is, you know, before the all the injuries happened, before COVID and all that nonsense at the end of the year, that's kind of how I'm looking at him, which is – he was very good at passing. He was still mobile. He still had a couple good games. But if he throws a league average touchdown on 4.4% of his attempts, I think you're going to have a guy who is about the quarterback 10, quarterback 12, rather than his MVP season when he threw. Well, it wasn't outrageous. Wasn't it like 9%? Yes, yeah, yeah. His second year, it was 9%. The question for me for Baltimore is, it, like be, because they did, they they threw the ball a lot. He threw the ball 382 times in essentially 11 games, where in all of 2020 he threw the ball 376 times in 15 games. Is that transformation was that necessity because the defense was so bad, or was that them really making the change of saying no, we we aren't just this run, 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 run team, and then we'll throw a touchdown here or there to Mark Andrews, have they become more balanced? Because I think they will still be a run-heavy team, but will the, the balance sometimes skew to uh, pass-heavy in, in neutral scripts? I mean, it's a good question. I don't know. It, yeah, it's a good question, and it's one that we reflected on with Kansas City in the past. With the pass attempts and the pass – you know, you wanted Dak last year. You wanted the Dak with the. You mean Dallas? You said Kansas. City. No, I know, but I, I, I was talking about Kansas City okay. because they improved their defense. Right, right. And it, yes, it came yes. at the expense of passing volume for Patrick Mahomes, and then I failed to transition properly <laughs> to talking about Dak last year before their defense re was resurgent. Obviously, he got injured, but you loved it when they were giving up a million points, and then that meant the passing volume for. I mean, remember Dak's like projection on the first two games yes. of the year? It's like. 5,700 yards and 400 touchdowns because those things are corollary. And if you play better defense then and you have a good running game, you win the Baltimore way. And so I don't know that this defense will be this bad again. They had more injuries on that secondary than it was imaginable. Yes. And then you got three running backs coming back off of ACLs. So the nice thing with Lamar to paint a good picture is that you know what the peak is. The peak is he wins the week. The peak is he can finish the MVP of the league. The peak is that he can uh, do what Josh Allen does and have a really bad passing game every once in a while and still finish number three 
on the week because he ran in some touchdowns or, you know, he's having a bad day and has one drive where he has 65 rushing yards. Oh, man. I'm I'm looking at this game log and I'm remembering because you, 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 you just hit the nail on the head, Andy. Lamar is someone who can win you a week, just completely take over a week. And I look and he finished quarterback one in week nine, 36.6 points. That's great. But then in week five, he finished as the quarterback two. He was not the quarterback one, and he put up forty nine point nine fantasy points. Mm -hmm. That is, that, how sad is that? Like you have that kind of a week. Like no, sorry, you're not the quarterback one this week. Uh, but he can absolutely win you a week. I think he's someone that I would take a stab at if he falls in drafts. But I don't believe that he ever gets back to the MVP season of some ridiculous nine percent touchdown rate. And I do think the transition to him throwing more is real because it because it matches the transactions the team has made to try to get him weapons and allow them to allow him to be more efficient from the park. When do you start factoring in the practice field conditions on drafting Lamar Jackson? <laughs> oh man, if you factor that in, you have to drop them several rounds because the amount of hay that they practice on is <laughs> is ridiculous. Get it together, yeah. man. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, in the injury, uh the first time we've really dealt with this with Lamar to this degree, but it's always something in the back of your mind with a quarterback that exposes himself to so much you know, damage. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about another interesting quarterback. Russell? Russell. Russell. Wilson. Wilson. We already know Pete Carroll's coming back. I don't know if that's a good thing for keeping Russ. He says he's going to explore his options. Here's your options, Russ. Go somewhere you don't like or stay here with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. He can explore his options. Russell's not going anywhere. His right? options are he's under contract. Well, you, that doesn't matter very much. If you if you're the quarterback and you want to make things uncomfortable, the team will. I mean, you almost saw it last year. He almost forced his way out of there. Almost. And so, he's got a full no trade clause. He chooses where he wants to go. And so, this is just the quote coming out about him exploring his options and not wanting to be there potentially. Yeah, I, I think he should want to be there. That's my point. Is I think he should want to be with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and a system that you can help define. Yeah, I, I agree. I and I, I think he will be there next year. I know that every fan base out there that does not have a great quarterback is hopeful that maybe he will get traded your way, but I doubt that happens. And I, I I've said this on the show in the past. Russell Wilson to me is a is a target in dynasty leagues because this was a really bad year. He's thirty three, and so I think a lot of Fantasy managers might be trying to capitalize and get out because they think it's the beginning of the end. That is not my opinion. My opinion is that what happened this year was really because of the broken hand. Um, you know, you saw just some terrible play coming back off that injury. That first month back, I know he had one game where he kind of garbage timed some touchdowns. That The fantasy finish was okay, but he was terrible in that, that game. Um, it took a long time. And then at the end of the year, you saw it. You, it, was, it looked like Russ was back. Um, and I think going into next year, I would uh, – Russell Wilson will probably be on several of my fantasy rosters because I think he'll, he'll, he's going to tumble his way down. Six, a QB 16 finish is not indicative of Russ's career in any way, shape, or form. The one thing about him is he was inconsistent but always inside the top 10 and had been in the top 10 since – 2013 so you're talking about you know eight full seasons prior to this one being a top 10 quarterback by fantasy finish you know I think his best days could be behind him sure. I do believe that that's possible because I think they're that's a tough division to compete in you know it's just going to be difficult for them you know is Pete Carroll there one more year two more years you know I guess it just depends uh, but I don't mind that as a target, and he's got some good football left, uh, much better than what you saw most of the year. He's 33. Yeah, I mean, 14% great games, 43% good. Yeah, I, I – Much better against bad teams, predictably better. 24 points a game against bad teams, only 15 against good ones. Yeah, when when you look at the sample this year, it's it's really hard to take those splits – Seriously, because were the good teams when he was playing with a broken hand or the bad teams during that time? Um, I, I wish that we saw a little bit more rushing out of him this year. That's rushing the only Wilson. rushing Wilson. Um, that was that's the only thing that worries me going forward. But you've kind of seen this. You're with, not going to see more of it. At no, age it, 34 year. Exactly. You're not. But we, we've we've seen that transition made successfully. Um, Aaron Rodgers used to 
actually run for uh, a good amount of yards. You don't almost remember it anymore because now it's he just uses it to scramble buy some time and then use his arm. I think we could see Russ make one of those type of transitions well, let me, at 34. Let me ask one more Russ question before we summarize some of these later guys. When you draft him next year, are you drafting him to start him every week? Or are you drafting him as a, you know, a, a quarterback that you're going to need to stream with? I am drafting him to start every week and I'm quick to pull the rip cord if I'm wrong. Okay. I won't, I won't just, uh, you know, uh, close my eyes and, and keep playing him through poor play if that's what happens, but I would be drafting him as a weekly starter. Four names to finish out the top 20, one name that I want to talk about inside of them. You can talk about the others, but there's one that I care about. All right. Jimmy G is number 17, consistency rank at 23. You have uh, Mac Jones, who's a consistency rank of 21. He finished at 18. You have Taylor Heineke at 19, consistency rank at 28, whatever. Uh, Matt Ryan at 20, finished consistency rank at 19. I wonder who you want to talk about. Is it Mac Jones? It's Mac Jones. Of course it's Mac Jones, because the other three, why would we want to talk about those guys? Matt Ryan's retired soon. <laughs> on the field. On the field. Uh, he's taking the Big Ben approach where he's retiring the last couple of years playing. And then... Um, Taylor Heineke's not worth a discussion. Exactly. And, and Jimmy G, I mean, we could... We could sit here and do the same old Kyle Shanahan, Trey Lance, Jimmy G triangle of doom. But to talk about, but not for fantasy. He's irrelevant for fantasy. And, and Mac Jones, I have a big note here. Kyle is very adamant. He wants me to save Mac Jones' discussion for mid-February when we do a rookie review show. No. Mm -mm. Oh. We're going to talk about it a little bit right now, and we can talk about it more then. Just because you we, didn't do we, the research yet doesn't mean that we can't talk about we it. We can do whatever we want, Kyle. He's not even here right now. Goodness. Which is great. Uh, now, Mac never gave you great games, but he's a rookie. And this was a team who I thought about talking about them and our uh, team that kind of surpassed expectation. Then I remembered that you didn't really want to play any of them still, which was the expectation. The running game was good. Damian Harris, Ramondre. But Mac Jones, from a functional standpoint, can he go from great rookie season, great debut, great leader, great mover of the offense to great fantasy player. Is that a possibility for Mac Jones? No. Never? Uh, I think he can go from a great rookie season to a good fantasy option. I don't know that he'll ever make that leap to great. Um, when you are a true pocket passer and you're not going to add just about anything with his legs, especially as his career goes on, um, you have to be, you know, 4,500 and and 38 touchdowns uh, you, you don't Tom think Brady can get, did it you don't think that Mac Jones can get to Joe Burrow no, I mean I, I think that would be the comp to I me. think that I don't not not in I that don't think system they have the same ceiling the is weapons that, is that, that yeah I guess that's what I'm asking because they're both pocket passers Mac Jones is very good at getting out of the pocket not running mm -hmm. but getting out to the exterior making he made some impressive plays this year with the right personnel, obviously he doesn't have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and company. That's the difference for um, me. My point is, is like over the course of his career, do you see him competing? I certainly think it's a that, dynasty question, really. I certainly think that Mac Jones is a very good dynasty asset and will be a quality streaming guy um, throughout his career. You know, if you had a uh, rookie Derek Carr, Derek Carr was so valuable over you know the course of seven years for fantasy purposes plugging them in here or there that's more the comp as far as fantasy production that i see for mac jones Derek is, Carr. is a Derek car let, let me make this brutal for you okay mike you can chime in mm -hmm. R uh, you're drafting a dynasty startup you're choosing mac jones or russell wilson at 34 years old mm -hmm. dynasty startup i'd still take russ i would as well all right maybe I not that hard <laughs> Mac Jones or yes. Tom Brady. Dynasty <laughs> startup. It's funny because yeah. we've talked about the philosophical argument of if you can get one season of dominance, what is is that worth more than seven seasons of uh, um, yeah. mediocrity no. that you could maybe plug in a line? He's not going to ever win you a championship. Like, is Tom Brady better? Asset? I'm. I don't. I'm not trying to be too you know hot takey here, but it's just a funny thing to think about. How many since more years one of them does Tom 44. play? Because he's back next year no matter what. Yeah, I I think that he retires at 45. I, I think After he, 45 I think season? he plays next year, plays excellent, and walks away. 
But I would not be surprised if he's playing to 50. I really wouldn't. If he decides. I mean, thank you. He, he said he wants to play to 50, right? Did he move the number? He always said 45 for a long time. He said he wanted to play to That's 45. That's Brady always moving the goalpost. Now he's like getting to 45 the, and he's playing so well. He put the so thought well. in my head that if Tom Brady really did play to 50. Like if you, if you just said he was retiring when he turns 50. Yeah. Now obviously he might not be great for the next five years. but He's pretty good fantasy I mean, asset. Just think about that. For a dynasty league, you get, let's say you get three more good years of Brady. Uh, when does Bruce retire? When Brady retires, because <laughs> like honestly, as great as Tom Brady has played, he is—he was very, very deliberate in the team that he picked. Uh, he went to a team that was fully loaded with elite offensive skill players, a very good defense, and a head coach that his offensive philosophy is go deep. He, yeah, should take he should take over at coach. I'm not joking. Do, oh, oh, back to just, the old player coach? Just, I mean, once you hit a certain age, aren't you qu technically a coach? You ha <laughs> yeah, I think you have. You, he, I assume that the other players call him Coach Brady. I want him walking off the <laughs> offensive side of the ball, putting on a headset, and calling the defense. <laughs> no, I, it's just so – it's amazing. And we, we're going to look back in 15 years – and tell our kids or whatever, you know, grandkids someday, like, we got to watch this guy play. Our grandkids are going to be watching him play. What are you talking <laughs> okay. about? Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Let's do a little Dynasty Mailbag. 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 Yow. Joey McLean. Joey McLean? From the greater Mississippi area. Says, oh. all right, guys, Dynasty question. Just coming off a of Joe Mixon RB4 overall season. Is this the time to sell high? And if so, would a smart trade be to go JoJo for Kyle Pitts? If I was in a PPR Dynasty League, I would trade Joe Mixon for Kyle Pitts. I oh, would, too. In a heartbeat. Joe Mixon is not that old. He's 25 and a half years old. That's fine. He should get... Um, uh, he should have another couple years of relevance. I think he's a good Dynasty asset. I would not be searching to unload him right this second. I think at the end of next year is when you're probably trying to peak his value sure. before the wheels come off. But if I could trade him, like, there's no chance in a dynasty startup I would draft Joe Mixon ahead of Kyle Pitts. That's just impossible for me to imagine. And that's more a product of running back shelf life versus exactly. versus Kyle Pitts shelf life. It'll be interesting. Like I'm I, every year, I try to think about which running backs it's time to move from in dynasty. You know, and I have a team that's got I have Zeke. Mm -hmm. I've got McCaffrey, Cook. I have Dalvin Cook, and they're all in that category of like they're uh, they're they're on the teeter totter. Yeah, and you know Dalvin Cook, he's not that old. You know, he's just not. Is he? He's not. He's not. Uh, give me give me the Dalvin Cook exact uh, age. I he, will look that up. He's twenty six years old. Yeah, he's twenty six point yeah. five years old. Twenty birthday in August, so he'll be twenty seven coming into this season. And twenty right. twenty seven is uh, an age that I fear, and he's twenty eight. Derrick Henry's 28. Yeah, no, I've, I'm terrified of Derrick Henry. So, yeah, all, all those guys, you try to time it up. You know, Joe Mixon's not a sell, active sell. But if this trade was in front of me, I would say yes. Agreed. Connor in Dayton, Ohio, would you rather have Aaron Jones or Saquon in a full PPR dynasty? <laughs> that is... <laughs> this is great because it's not a question of which one you really want. Right. It's a matter of which one you want, like which one you dislike less. I would take Saquon. Aaron Jones is a full two years older than Saquon Barkley. Uh, and there's Jones. a lot of question marks about – look, it's an easy Saquon. Easy. Not even close. Is Saquon – Saquon is the starting running back no, for no. that team for a while. Where Aaron Jones is going to what? At a minimum well, platoon with a, an ascending Dylan? Yes. The, and the, the, uh, the platoon is real. Two but, years older? But Saquon Barkley has sucked. Saquon Barkley is this is the this is year five, so this is it for him being on the New York Giants, and the Giants are going to be terrible, more than likely. I it's hard to it's hard to see the path that they change things so much that they're actually a, a strong offense, and we've seen Barkley like he needs a good positive game script to really thrive, and. Is he going to get the massive second contract? Probably. 
I, I think it's probably, but Aaron Jones has it. He's on it right now. He's secure. I mean, we're going to get into truth episodes. Maybe we pause the Aaron Jones evaluation when we talk about running backs, the truth of Aaron Jones, because this year was not all that it could have been for Aaron Jones either. Okay, so Saquon missed some games this year, obviously. So we want to look at points per game on how he did. Do we, though? (laughs) Points per game for Saquon. Where do you think he ranks? RB? Uh, 20. A little hard. He missed missed four games, and he was knocked out right away. Okay. So three opportunities. Sure. So I'm that's, gonna guess it's twenty five. It's gonna skew it poorly. Twenty five. Thirty five. Running back yeah. thirty five on a points per game basis. So it's like I'm gonna ask thirty five. <laughs> he's he scares me the way that Todd Gurley scared. You know, it's like, is he ever gonna get back to being great? Because when you watch the game, and maybe I'm alone in this. No. I'm, I thought Booker looked like the better running back than Saquon. I thought so too. And I totally get what you're saying that Saquon is younger. He is the starter. Uh, versus will be another year AJ, back from the ACL. Yeah, and and AJ Dillon is I'm not I'm not even sure I I probably want AJ Dillon more than I want Aaron Jones, but Aaron Jones still looks good, right? Like Aaron Jones is dominating when he's getting the ball, um, just from a, a eyeball test. So I don't know that one's really close to me. So call it. You got. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go Aaron Jones. I I think uh, you have part of this decision to me is you have to call your shot on Aaron Rodgers. Is, is Aaron Rodgers a Green Bay Packer next year? I I've always thought he would be. Then I would want Aaron Jones. Yeah, it's tough. You got to split vote. Make your decision. Yeah, you got to draw. You got to make your decision on Saquon recovering. You know, he came off an ankle injury in the back half of the year. Yes, looked he worse did. in the back half of the year. Had a couple top ten finishes in the front of it, and he's coming off the ACL. So it's like, could you wake up? Yeah, absolutely. He could. <clears throat> Zeke or Barkley in a dynasty? Barkley. Zeke. Okay. You think Zeke bounces back? Ah, truth episodes for running. <laughs> oh, sorry. They're coming soon. Uh, should I trade Elijah Mitchell for Michael Pittman in a half PPR dynasty league? Lee in Ottawa wants to know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you probably should. Uh, Tanner in Regina, Saskatchewan. Oh, bonjour. It's been a while. Uh, who wins this half PPR dynasty trade? Team one receives Christian McCaffrey. Oh, my gosh. Team two receives Chris Godwin in pick 104. Well, that's fun. Christian McCaffrey, you devil. I have gotten – we just talked about my roster, right? Yeah. So I've had to go the dive on all these guys and make decisions uh, about who I'm shopping. I'm not shopping McCaffrey. I'm not shopping Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. But would would you take Godwin in the 104? I probably should, but I won't. Yeah, I don't blame you. But, I mean, Godwin coming off of the ACL, he'll be okay. But so many questions right now of – I'm not doing that. I'm, Who, I'm McCaffrey. Does he have to sign a one year? Duh. He's a free he was, agent. He's already he's franchised this year, That's right? right? So he so is, he will not get double franchised. I can't imagine by Tampa Bay it will be so much money. Don't know what team he's playing for. When will he be ready during the season? Yeah, and then and then there's a lot of question marks with the 104. I I take the CMC side here. Oh my gosh. I prediction on Godwin. One year deal. Tampa Bay. In Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I. That would be my same prediction. I think Brady will get what Brady wants, and Brady wants Godwin back on that team. And that probably makes a lot of sense. Probably for Godwin. all one years for all those guys for a little while. <laughs> Just every every year, uh, Brady, Tom, Brady, uh, you in, you out? Are you <laughs> going to do this one more? Okay. Well, not Antonio Brown. Probably uh, not. No, no. Yeah. A done year. Uh, all right. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, that's going to wrap this one up. Brooks, what do we have next on the truth agenda? Running back. So, oh. I mean, good. Great. Perfect. Jointhefoot.com's the fantasy football community. We'll be back with those truth episodes next week. Enjoy the football this weekend. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.